Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'm going to be showing to you how to reapply thermal paste, um, remove um, and replace your CPU and also obviously how to reinstall your CPU cooler. And these are the items that you would need. Now starting from most obvious, this is anti-static wristband. It's not required but it is recommended to have one. You would have to have some thermal paste obviously because you will need to clean off the old thermal paste. You can't reapply the cooler. Well, it's not recommended anyway. You would need some cleaning um, kind of methods, which these facial wipes would do just fine. Also, these cotton buds as well. Um, you will need some sort of cleaning liquid. Um, not requirement, but it is recommended. Much easier to do with one. A surgical spirit or rubbing alcohol. And you also obviously would need a screwdriver. In my case, that would be removing all four... Um, locking screws on the CPU cooler and the two screws on the back of the case to remove the panel to access everything. So let's get started. All right, and I'm back. So first I removed my hard drive cage, which was in this part right here, so I could access my CPU cooler. Um, first thing what you'd need to do is remove any fans. So in some cases it'd be fans on both sides. So I'd remove the fan first. To do that, I would need to unclip these things. Now I can't reach the bottom one really in the small case so I would use something like that to simply undo that and once that's done you're able to remove the fan. Now you don't need to unplug it or anything like that you just put it on the side and now you have access show you there to four screws that holding the bracket um, on the back and basically holding the cooler in place. And to undo this, you simply need to undo all the screws. Now, usually I would do it the way I installed it. So use the opposite corners. So loosen it here, then loosen on the other side, and then do the same right here. Okay, now that everything is loose, um, I wouldn't advise you to just pull it out, just wiggle it a bit, and then it just goes. So wiggle it a bit and then pull it up. Now when you're putting it down, I'd say twist it around because you do have lots of thermal paste on there. You just put it aside. Now to remove the CPU, you just push this retention bracket down, push it to the side and then just release it. That's it. And then you keep pushing it that way. That lifts up that thing and then you re release the whole mechanism and this is your CPU. Now, this is a good reason to ground yourself before touching it. Now I'm grounding myself, but just do make sure that you do the same. And this is the CPU. Do hold it by the sides. Don't touch the bottom. No need for that. And that's how it is. Now, for that, I basically would use something like this and place the CPU nicely on the pad. And that's it. So for the moment, um, you're ready basically to install your new CPU and to reapply the thermal paste. Before you apply the thermal paste, I'm gonna show you how to remove the old one. All right, and I'm back. So we're gonna start with the obvious one, which is the cooler itself. So you basically use the clean pad I would recommend in the beginning and remove as much of it as you can. Now guys, be careful because this stuff really would stain your clothes or anything like that. So make sure you're working on the surfaces where nothing can be affected so you wouldn't be needing to throw things away. Okay, so that's one. Obviously, once you're finished, once again, throw it out somewhere so it wouldn't affect your work surface or anything like that. Now next, what I would usually do is clean it with rubbing alcohol, but we still have the CPU to clean. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. Hold the CPU by its sides like so. Sorry. And just wipe it clean. And make sure you just don't get it into crevices somewhere here. Now, it's not a big deal if this um, thermal paste does go on this green PCB because um, is just thermal paste, but at the same time, you wouldn't want to go it on the contacts or anything like that. So just be careful and make sure you clean it thoroughly. Okay, 
So now that we have most of the stuff cleaned, what I would usually do is take some rubbing alcohol, apply it onto the pad, and clean the most delicate component, which would be the CPU itself. And just do exactly what you would do with rubbing alcohol, rub it all off. Now, once you've done that, I would highly recommend to clean it with a clean pad. The reason for that is rubbing alcohol is not really streak free. It does leave some sort of residue. So I would recommend to clean that rubbing alcohol off the chip, not to leave it on. And that's basically our final result. So nice and clean chip, ready for sale or ready for reinsertion, depending on what you decided to do. Put it aside and do exactly the same thing with your cooler. Now, one thing um, that's important to note is these pads are great for cleaning, but also what they do is they do leave some little fluff. Make sure there's no fluff left on the CPU or CPU cooler before you apply the thermal paste, because obviously these things would not be doing you any favors when they heat up to 80 degrees or so. So the cleaner, the better. And that's it. Next step, I'm going to show you how to reapply the thermal paste and install the CPU. Now, in my case, I would be changing the CPU for another one. So I'm going to show you how to install a different CPU into the socket. So I'm going to be applying the thermal paste on the cooler. I'm going to be installing the different CPU. I'm going to show you how the whole process works. So stay tuned. All right. So let's get it started. First, I have my new CPU. Now in this case, I'm going to be using a Xeon E3 1230V2. You will be able to see the unboxing and the benchmarks on this particular system versus an i5-3570K, that's right, i5-3570K, overclocked and at stock speeds. But anyway, this is an installation video. So basically take your new CPU and you place it this way. There are two cut grooves there on each side and you have the same on the socket. All you have to do is to drop it right in and do nothing at all. No pressing, no wiggling around, nothing. Then you drop this bracket over here. Once again, do nothing after that. And then just close this latch. As you're closing it, this metal piece would be securing itself. Go to the left, under it, and that's your CPU secured. As easy as that. Next thing, um, which is my least favorite part, is installing the actual cooler. For that, I'm going to be using first, obviously, the thermal paste, and it's going to be Arctic Silver 5. This is quite uh, a good paste, and I would highly recommend that to you. Now, the way I would apply the paste, if you if I could make it guys visible to you is like this because you have this particular cooler type where you have lots of imperfections on the surface and you have even lit little gaps over here you have to apply a different method usually if if it all would be nice and square and mirror finish I would put a pea sized dot in the middle and that usually would be enough however it's a bit different application so what I usually do is I would apply a line this length on one side on one groove and the outermost groove on the copper once again same thing and the residue the rest I would leave inside and that's about it um, just make sure it's all even and that's as much paste as you need you don't need really to whack the ton of paste or anything like that for the CPU to be properly cooled that's all that it needs. Now for next one, you're basically lowering it. Make sure that your bracket is secured the way it should be. You're lowering it towards at least two points where you would be securing it. And just drop it in like so. And that's it. Next thing on this particular cooler is I'm going to try to secure at least one of the points. So I'm going to choose this don't need to tighten it too bad first we need to secure them all then we're going to tighten it 
Wiggle the cooler as you do, make sure it sits properly. So two points secured. Now I'm gonna go to the Thor. That one's secured. And to the fourth. So now that everything's holding straight, doesn't wiggle too much, I'm ready. So I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna secure them tightly using the opposite corner. So I'm gonna do an X fashion first this, then that, then over here, and then over here. And then I'm gonna come back to you when it's all ready. And that's it. Now in this particular cooler, there are actually stops, so you can't really tighten them too bad, so it's fine. Basically once it stops, it stops. You don't really need to use any force or anything like that. Now that your cooler is installed, you basically reapply the fan. Now my fan would be actually um, interfering somewhat with RAM module, so what I do is I sit it on the RAM and then I push it in. And that's it. That's your cooler reinstalled, your CPU reinstalled and thermal paste reapplied. That's pretty much it. Next I'm gonna be reinstalling my drive cage over here and everything will be assembled. I'm gonna put the case cover back. Um, couple things. First, if you have an Intel stock cooler, you can just remove it and reapply it to the new CPU. You do need to scrape that paste off with something like these things, even without rub rubbing alcohol. You can use something like that for more precise cleaning action. And basically, yeah, you need to scrub that uh, old paste off and you would need to reapply the paste. Paste is relatively cheap. You can get something like that for less than $10 or less than 10 euro. And it's a really good paste and it will last you for a good few installations. Unless you're experimenting a lot in your overclock and whatnot. Another thing is once you have everything installed, um, you're happy with all the installation, you do need to check your temperatures. First thing I would recommend is boot into your BIOS, go to some sort of temperature monitoring and have a look at CPU temperatures. Um, at, in this case, the CPU would not be under load, it would not be heating, and if you have done something wrong, you will have time to basically switch off the CPU and see, sorry, the computer and see what has happened there. Now, Intel CPUs do have protection features and things like that, but in case you are using an older CPU that might not or anything like that, um, this is the thing what I would do, go into BIOS, check your temperatures. If you can go into BIOS, boot into Windows, Windows, and first thing you do is check the temperatures. If the temperatures are below, let's say, 50, it's not too bad. Now, in my particular case, with the ambient room temperature of about 20, this CPU should be holding at 30, 35 degrees with this cooler, max. And under load, it should be holding at max about 60, 70 um, at most. If the temperatures are different, chances are you didn't apply the thermal paste properly, you need to do the whole process again. Or maybe the cooler is not sitting properly on the socket. Um, once that's done, once you're happy with these temperatures, you can do the low test. So basically test the CPU for say at least half an hour. I would recommend at least an hour on something like Prime 95, low test, and just leave it there and make sure that everything goes well. Monitor your temperatures, see that the temperatures didn't go over what you expected. And once everything is done, then you're 100% sure that you did install it right and now you can start running. For the temperature, by the way, you can use something like a real temp. It's a quite a good tool and it works every time and it shows the temperature of all your four cores. And this is more accurate than actually using third party soft, uh, software or even an integrated like uh, Asus uh, AI suite. So yeah, thanks guys for watching the video. Don't forget to like and uh, subscribe for more videos to come. Comment the video, leave any questions in the comment section down below. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.